Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens to my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Psalm 116, to be read responsively by the half verse. I love the Lord because the Lord has heard the voice of my supplication. And inclined an ear to me whenever I cried out. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and the Lord helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death. My eyes from tears 
and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. In the land of the living. A reading from the letter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, 
who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what they, can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't know that there's anything much I can say this weekend. There's not seeming to me that one thing to share in a sermon. This weekend is full of remembrance. We are all hearing and sharing our stories. Where were you 20 years ago? What were you doing? How did it hit you? What do you remember? We are also, this weekend, surrounded by the beauty of life. The music today for our worship service almost stands in such stark contrast to the pain of 20 years ago. Life is pain and beauty, remembrance of terror and hope for tomorrow. Life is what we are called to be about. Jesus asks his disciples at this time in this gospel about who they see him to be. He starts by asking so what do others say about me? And we hear certain answers. I know there were other things reported in the gospel. There are those who said he has a demon. He's demonic. He might be Satan himself. There are those who just thought he was crazy. He's beside himself. The disciples report on those who think he's a great prophet. One of those returned from old who bring God's word. Who do you say that I am is the crux, is, is the central question though. You are the Messiah, Peter steps forward with an answer. And Jesus sternly tells them to not say anything about it to anyone. Why? Why? So because we get the meaning of this life so wrong so often, so because Jesus understood that they still had so much more to learn about what God was about in this world. I wonder if we got a taste of it a little bit on September 12th, when people around the world from all kinds of nations and religions 
for holding up candles of sorrow and remembrance. May we've got a taste of it, of saying life is not just about what's in it for me, but life is about us as part of a community that gives ourselves for each other. When Peter answers Jesus's question, who do you say that I am with, you're the Messiah, Peter had a certain idea in mind, and it didn't match what Jesus then launches into talking about suffering and dying. For Peter, the Messiah was the one who was going to stop the terror of the Romans, who was going to bring down the foreign enemy who was occupying their land. The Messiah was going to be the one who was going to deliver them mightily, politically, militarily. The Messiah was going to set things right by power and might and dominance. A dead Messiah means nothing. And so Jesus tells them, don't speak about Messiah because you don't understand. Do we yet? Do we still have any idea? Who do you say that Jesus is? Or do you say anything at all? I know that I have a hard time sometimes claiming connection to this one who is so central to my life because then I have to face all that has been done so wrong in Jesus' name. The sins of this world, the sins of God's church committed supposedly in the name of this Messiah who says no Quit talking as if you understand. Quit acting as if you understand what I'm about. Hush, listen, follow me. Don't tell me what it's about. Follow me and you will learn. It is about giving yourself, your every day, your very life for the love of the other not because you like your enemies, you're not gonna like your enemies, but you're called to love them, which is not an emotional thing at all. It's a place of action and giving. It is the only place of transformation to love this world. So I invite you today to remember beauty, to remember the gift of life, I have come that they might have life and might have it abundantly. And Jesus also says, I have come to give myself for the life of the world and you are to follow me. I don't know what that means today for me. I still have so much to be quiet about, to listen, to learn, to know that somehow hanging on to the things that I think are so important are not important at all, that I need to lose those in order to really find life, that I need to let go of my clinging to power and ambition and position in order to find the true life, the spark of love that can light this world in new ways. So may the beauty of Jesus's life, the gift of Jesus's death, the wonder of Jesus's resurrection, help us figure out ways to follow Jesus's path, to take up that which might be what we hang upon, what we lose our lives through, to take up our cross for the life of this world for the beauty of love and life and laughter and joy, for the beauty that God saw in creation when God created it and said, oh, this is good. And God loved it so much that God gave God's very self for the life of it. It is not in dominating the world, in killing off all our enemies, it is not in those things which we find life. But as Christians, 
May we proclaim who Jesus is by giving our life up in love for each other, for our friends, our families, our neighbors, our nation, our enemies. Amen. Let us pray. Fill, O Lord, your church with wisdom, that it may reflect your love and light and be an image of your goodness. Lord, may we confess Jesus as our Christ and Savior, not only in word, but by the way we live, and so bring others to a deeper awareness of your love. Remembering Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Susan, our rector, guide all who preach and teach in your name. We pray for a deepening of unity among all Christians. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless with your wisdom all places of learning. We pray for schools, colleges, and training establishments, for all lecturers, teachers, and trainers of people. We pray for all who influence our minds through broadcasting or the press, for all involved in publishing and printing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who lack confidence, all who have a low self-esteem. We give thanks for those who have gave us confidence to venture and to risk all who have given us strength to stand on our own feet. We give thanks for and pray for our homes, our friends, and our neighbors. We rejoice with those who bring another year as they celebrate birthdays or anniversaries this week. You are invited to name your own thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Support all who are fearful and anxious, all who are timid and afraid to venture. We pray for all who doubt their own ability or your love. We remember all who are lonely or desperate. We pray for those who are considering suicide. We pray for all who have faced new challenges in the wake of hurricanes or other natural disasters. We remember all who are in pain or distress. You are invited to name those for whom you pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you praise with your saints in glory. We pray for all who are departed from this life and have entered into newness of life in your kingdom. You are invited to name those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we remember before you today those whose lives were lost in the catastrophic events of September 11th, 2001, and for all those whom we love but no longer see. We give thanks to you for the selfless courage of those brave souls who ran into burning buildings and who labored in the rubble. And we give thanks for the same courage we see today as healthcare workers return day after day to the bedsides of those sick and dying from COVID-19. May their courage be to us a witness of what is possible when we are guided by love and dedication to our fellow human beings. We pray today for the continued healing of all those suffering emotional and physical scars. May your spirit breathe new breath into clouded lungs, new life into troubled minds, and new warmth into broken hearts so that all may feel wrapped in your loving embrace. May we move from suffering to hope, from brokenness to wholeness, from anxiety to courage, from death to life, from fear to love, and from despair to hope. Guide our feet into the way of peace. 
Inspire us with hope in the gift of shalom and salam. May we receive this gift so that we might become instruments of your peace in this world, knowing all people as equally loved, lovingly created children of God. Amen. Now let us close. I invite you to pray with me the general thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And maybe I don't have to remind you, especially this weekend, but remember, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Follow the way of Christ. Love and serve the Lord 
and your neighbor. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.